Hi, my name is Heath Keniston, a student with the Antioch School, pastor of Crossroads Church in West Osby, New Hampshire. I'm making this video uh, rather than writing papers to describe um, my uh, use of the Logos Bible Study software. Um, I thought it would be uh, more appropriate and maybe a little bit easier to understand um, how I use the program um, and what benefits it's been to me in the study of Greek and Hebrew linguistics um, as well as uh, building a digital library of commentary sets and reference materials. Um, I can honestly say that um, using the the Logos or Logos Bible study software uh, has totally changed um, the way the way that I study scripture, uh, the way that I prepare for preaching and teaching. <clears throat> it has been a wonderful, wonderful blessing um, and has definitely helped me grow, uh, not just as a preacher, but as a disciple of Jesus. Uh, when I first started preaching um, or teaching in any uh, in any context, um, I started with I started with this Bible. Um, this is a you can't see it anymore, but it's a Greek and Hebrew keyword study Bible, um, and uh, that was that was all of the reference material I had in here. Um, so whatever lexicons I use were the ones that are in here. Um, whatever language tools. Uh, we're all confined to the back uh, of this um, of this Bible. So uh, it was a great resource. Uh, it uses Strong's numbers as well as its own um, uh, its own system of numbers. Kohlenberger, uh, I believe it's called. Um, it was a great resource, uh, but extremely limited. And now, using uh, the Logo software that I'm going to walk you through. Uh, my process in using uh, has just totally exploded and expanded um, my understanding of the language and structure and uh, as well as uh, access to all of these other uh, resources um, that that fill up my digital library rather than filling up the shelves uh, here in my study. So I'm going to turn the camera to the computer screen and um, and walk you through exactly how I use this program. Okay, so here we are at the Logos home screen. Um, I'm using uh, Logos 8, which uh, I have to upgrade to Logos 9 here pretty soon. I started with Logos 4. Uh, things have changed quite a bit. Um, in uh, in the program, uh, one of the things that I learned very early on, which has been fantastic, is uh, to create a layout um, that keeps all of my resources uh, that I use on a regular basis open all in one place. Uh, and so that's what uh, that's what this is is all of those, the different layouts that I have uh, that either are included in the program um, or things that I have, uh, layouts that I have created and the one that I use um, all the time, I've labeled preaching. Uh, I have a, a button right here that will bring me to that as well. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of walk around these different um, uh, different boxes that I've got here, panels, I guess. Uh, in this uh, this area here, these tabs are all the Bibles that I keep uh, that I keep open all the time, uh, as well as my search tab and any notes. So, um, sorry for the big blue pointer, but I wanted you to be able to see what I'm pointing at. Um, so this uh, this pane, I uh, like I said, I keep my 
Bible. This is the English Standard Version, which is I, what I use all the time. Um, and I also have NIV, which is what I grew up using. So all my memorized verses are, are in the NIV. Uh, I'm too young to have them memorized in King James Version. Uh, and also uh, keep open the Good News Bible, uh, which is... Um, uh, a version, a translation that I learned about in Interpreting One. Um, and I liked the uh, translation philosophy of um, really getting at meaning and thought for thought translation. Um, NIV is also thought for thought translation. Uh, and the ESV, however, is a, um, a more strict word for word translation and I kind of operate under the uh, under the understanding that God's word uh, is God's words and so the words that uh, are used are important and I, I understand and I appreciate the thought for thought translation is trying to get at the meaning uh, but I really enjoy the study of the individual words um, and what their um, their range of meanings are the semantic range, whatever you want to call it. Um, so, um, again, like I said, I keep uh, keep the scripture here, uh, and I also have um, my other resources linked uh, linked to uh, this tab, so that w if I, uh, for instance, this is Genesis one one, but if I go to uh, this first Corinthians 9 24 that I was preparing uh, for preaching this week so all my commentaries also flip to that as well to first Corinthians 9 24 so I really uh, I really appreciate that and that I don't have to have six commentary sets uh, physical commentary sets open on my desk uh, or taking up room on my shelf or anything like that I, I'm kind of a minimalist when it comes to that and I love being able to have this all in one one place uh, one of the other things uh, one of the other tools that I use is down here and that is um, this reverse interlinear um, tool uh, so uh, this allows me to click on the word let's click on race here come on now I don't usually use this mouse, so I apologize. It's not working the way that I want. Just want to click on that word. For whatever reason, it is not letting me do that. So bananas. Anyway, um, so we can look at this word instead, uh, the word no. Um, so the interlinear here <clears throat> allows me to, um, to look at uh, the, Greek, uh, the Greek words in the manuscript um, and what that actually looks like with the Greek letters. Uh, the little orange numbers tell me what order the words are used in, in the original manuscripts or the oldest manuscripts. Um, and then we have underneath that is the manuscript transliterated, uh, which basically just takes this Greek word and writes it with English letters so that I can, I can pronounce that, um, which is very helpful uh, and always impresses the congregation. <laughs> Not really, but uh, and also over here, um, if I can get it to click on that word for whatever reason it is not does not want to do it anyway um, getting back to this the so the manuscript transliterated and then the lemma uh, the root word uh, at least that's how I understand it um, and then the lemma transliterated Again, just what this, the, the root word that this, uh, the word in the actual manuscript is, is uh, based on. 
Uh, and then the morphology, which uh, has been very helpful in a lot of ways um, because sometimes the English word, um, the translators did the best that they could. And I, I, I'm certainly not critical of their work because they are incredible people that have put in an incredible amount of work. They're a lot smarter than me. Uh, but sometimes they use words that don't, um, well, sometimes they're, they're very polite uh, in um, the words that they chose, the English words that they chose. Uh, and sometimes just the English language doesn't make it easy to understand fully what the original author's intent was. One of the best examples for this um, uh, that I've found if I could just get this to click right. Um, is the word, um, the word you, which this just, this is killing me. It's only because I'm showing off for this video. What I'm trying to get at is, um, The English translation of the word you doesn't always indicate whether it's singular or plural. And that's why the shift key is being pressed. So um, now this is this is better. Uh, so when I click on you may obtain it or I clicked on you, and it shows me that the Greek word um, that is translated, you may obtain, is all this one Greek word, um, which I won't try to pronounce, because um, it's not important. Um, but I can go back, I can go down here to the morphology in a, and hover over that with my mouse. And one of the, one of the, <laughs> seems simple, but it's kind of actually pretty amazing, uh, and that looking at the U, it's, it's plural. Um, which means Paul isn't addressing an individual. He's addressing a group of people. And quite honestly, that takes the idea of a highly individualized discipleship and spreads it out into the group. The church family is being addressed here. Um, you know, so it's very tempting to um, honestly be very self-centered and individualize everything uh, and Paul is addressing a group and so that that means that the things that he is talking about um, applies to everybody in the church and they can or we can all collectively work on those things together um, not just uh, singled out and that's quite honestly been uh, very influential and um, effective in our church family, understanding that uh, we're not just a, a collection of individual disciples, but we are one body, one family. Um, so anyway, you get the morphology here um, that uh, this is a verb uh, that's the in the aorist tense or the past tense, um, active, subjunctive, um, second person plural. So... Um, that's been really, uh, really helpful just in something simple like that, uh, knowing that that verb is plural, or that you is plural. And down below that, I have um, the Lonida lexicon, uh, which has also been very helpful um, to get a little bit of more fullness in, in the Greek word that's used. Uh, so here again um, is the Greek word that's translated, you may obtain. Uh, it says to acquire with the implication of significant effort, uh, to acquire, to attain, to obtain, to take. Um, and then it will show where else that's used uh, in Scripture. Now, this is not um, the only place I have access to the low NIDA. Um, it's, also, uh, it's also over here. Um, uh, and gives that same thing. And if I click on that link, I usually keep it over here, but it was closed. Uh, so here is that same uh, Greek word. And uh, 
in that same same definition there and that's kind of i don't want to skip ahead but that's what that's what this uh how i use this pane uh over here uh i have um the lonida again uh also the theological dictionary of the new testament uh the easton's bible dictionary and then this is a new one for me the enhanced brown driver briggs hebrew and english lexicon um Quite honestly, I do most of my preaching out of the New Testament. And so understanding those Greek words, um, I've gotten a lot more practice of that. But again, not not to ignore the Old Testament or the Hebrew. Uh, this is another tool um, that I am getting to know um, and appreciate more. So it's the same thing only for Hebrew words. Uh, so again, I have a lot of learning to do there, but uh, it's a great tool. Those are all great tools to have. So that kind of wraps up this pane. I also have uh, the search bar, um, which is which is great. If I, I have a verse fragment or or a word stuck in my mind um, that uh, I want to find in Scripture, I can just type that in there um, and search for it. So uh, what was new with Logos 8, I think it was, is this fuzzy Bible search, which is great because that's how my... Uh, my memory is usually pretty fuzzy. So uh, if I can kind of think of a couple of words in a verse, uh, it, it kind of does this, um, this fuzzy search here, as well as down below, you can see um, the different uh, places that that particular phrase occurs um, in different versions of the Bible. So um, English Standard, NIV, New King James, New American Standard, and New Revised Standard Version. So those are those are selected as my top Bibles uh, in the program. So it searches those ones first. Okay, and also in this pane are notes. So anything that I have uh, highlighted um, shows up here. I have a tendency to highlight things in my um, commentaries and then just keep reading and keep reading and I, I lose them. Um, and after I've highlighted something in my first commentary and gone on to the sixth one, I've forgotten what I've highlighted. Well, the notes pane um, brings them all into one place and that is very, very helpful to me. Uh, keep me keeps me organized without really even trying. Uh, so I'm grateful for that tool. So that's, uh, that is this pane. Now this pane over here is where I keep my commentary sets. And um, I use these six commentary sets um, weekly. Uh, I don't, um, I don't know where I would be without these, to be honest with you. Um, and they are arranged in a specific order here uh, from uh, the first one being um, Lang's commentary on the Holy Scriptures. Uh, this is a very technical, um, exegetical resource, uh, which is, is very word specific. Um, So you can see the words in, in black are the, the scripture, and then it, it will get into some pretty technical uses of it, um, as well as uh, how other people have uh, have used it. Um, uh, so that's uh, that's been a great resource. Although I admit, um, <laughs> after my stroke, reading this became very, very difficult, and I had to work very, very hard to understand what was here and for quite a long time I just skipped this one because my brain would not recognize uh, what's going on in here because it jumps back and forth um, from Greek to English and sometimes there's Latin in there uh, so it's that's been a, a real challenge but uh, it's gotten a lot better so I'm able to use that more fully uh, so JP Lang um, great commentary the next one is Calvin's commentary. Um, so, uh, and like I said, these are all these are all linked to um, 
the scripture. So um, if I if I uh, if I change from First Corinthians to Hebrews or whatever, this uh, these will all flip with me uh, and track with me, which is again really helpful and it keeps me from filling up my shelves and uh, with books and then spending all the time to flip through all those books. Um, all the flipping is done and it's, uh, it's been a, a wonderful addition. Um, and again, uh, so Calvin's commentaries uh, translated a couple of times, written in Latin, translated to French, and then translated in English, um, I think, I believe so. Um, so this is, again, a great resource um, that I've been able to take advantage of. Uh, next commentary is um, is Jameson Fawcett and Brown commentary, critical and explanatory on the whole Bible. Um, again, another great resource. Um, it's 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 still fairly technical, uh, not as technical as Lang. Um, uh, so this 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 range uh, ranges from technical on this end to devotional on this end. So it's kind of kind of in the middle there. Um, not quite as, uh, doesn't quite, not quite as exegetical, I guess. It doesn't pull apart the words quite so much, uh, but more um, phrases. And then the next one is Bible Knowledge Commentary, uh, which I believe was included with Logo. So this is one I've had from the beginning. Uh, yeah, Bible Knowledge Commentary. Uh, again, starting to move more towards devotional from technical, uh, but a great resource. I have no idea why that keeps popping up. Um, and then Matthew Henry, uh, which is uh, very devotional. Um, I don't always agree with everything that he says, but it's been a great resource uh, and it's been um, very helpful. Uh, but again, it's... Uh, much more devotional so um he's it's almost it's almost a sermon that you're reading so um but very helpful to get his take on those things um and then the last one is warren wearsby's bible exposition commentary and honestly this i i believe that this is um basically uh transcripts of sermons um or the the B series of his books, which were which were all sermons, um, collected into one place in the Bible exposition commentary. So he's done the work of the exposition. So basically, reading Warren Wiersbe's interpretation of uh, passages of scripture, which have been wonderful. I really really enjoy uh, reading that. Um, so uh, this is how I start. Uh, in preparing for for preaching or teaching, um, I start with the scripture and read it and read it and read it uh, and pray and read it some more. And then um, start then I start reading through these commentaries in this order from left to right, um, starting with um, the most exegetical and working towards devotional. Um, and then starting to then I, I start to. Um, Pull some of those ideas and and start writing. Um, but again, anything that I highlight here. Um, so it's just going to use a good old fashioned highlighter. Uh, and now that shows up in my notes. It should show up in my notes over here. Of course, it's not going to just because I said that. So you'll have to take my word for it. I'll figure that out. Uh, so this pane down here, um, I usually, whoops, uh, usually keep, I'm not used to a giant mouse arrow either. I usually keep uh, minimized uh, and just pull it up when I need it. Um, and again, this is the Lonida. The Theological Dictionary of the New Testament, Easton's Bible Dictionary, and then this new one, Enhanced Brown Driver Briggs 
Hebrew and English lexicon. Uh, so those reference works I keep uh, kind of stuck down here and pull them out when I need them, um, but I spend most of my time um, again with the with the scripture itself and then these commentary sets. Um, so the way that I got to this layout is by using um, the exegetical guide uh, in here, uh, and that that is a tool to do exactly what um, what it sounds like um, to help you exegete the scripture. So um, it has all kinds of um, resources here. Any content that I've created and saved in the program, which I don't do, um, is available there. But I don't I don't use that. Um, so um, here's some some uh, some of those uh, Greek Greek tools. Excuse me, um, and this is a handy. Uh, a handy little tool to help me uh, if I do want to show off to the congregation and pronounce that Greek word. I can, it'll help me. <laughs> it'll help me do that. And our our joke is just say it with confidence because nobody's going to correct you because we live in New Hampshire. <laughs> so, um, so one of the. Uh, one of the most important things that um, that this getting to getting to the original languages has helped me to do um, is to get get a better handle on the the original I, not to borrow all the phrases but the original author the original audience and and the original author's intent. Um, because the original authors weren't writing in English, they weren't writing to the American church. Um, and so getting a better handle on the range of meanings of, um, of each word uh, in the original language has been, has been really important because, um, as it's been said over and over, the scripture can never mean what it never meant. Uh, so I want to get at what it originally meant uh, and that a lot of times that means having to cut through, you know, how we've Americanized the scripture and get to the original meaning. Um, so we can take that meaning and apply it rather than um, our, our more modern American idea um, of what the scripture means. So... Um, All that to say, uh, using the exegetical guide, that's how I got to these resources. Um, and this is, this is just pulling all of those words apart. Um, and so here's the Lonida, um, and then some more, um, dictionaries, uh, for each, for each word. So that's kind of how I started with logos. Um, and can't tell that I'm an American because we call it logos, not logos. Anyway, um, so um, the sermon starter guide was also very helpful um, in that you can just select a passage, um, and that that uh, again provides. A lot of resources so this is this is how uh, in the giant library that uh, came with logos this is how I came to uh, some of the resources um, that I started with so here's the Bible knowledge commentary which is up here Bible exposition commentary which is up there um, so commentary critical and explanatory in the whole Bible Jameson Fawcett and Brown um, there's Lang's um, Matthew Henry, uh, and I acquired um, Calvin's commentaries later on. Uh, but this is, I don't know why that keeps happening. 
Um, this is where all that started. And I don't use a lot of the tools like borrowing somebody else's outlines for each scripture, but it's there if you want. Um, different themes, uh, different topics. I don't, uh, I, I'm not a topical preacher, um, um, so I don't, uh, don't take advantage of those tools so much. Um, some word maps. Um, and then uh, illustrations <clears throat> as well. Uh, there are other sermons that you can listen to, and I've done that a little bit, but not very much, listening to other people preach on that particular text, as well as some um, media resources. Um, I don't use PowerPoint. I, I don't use a lot of stuff up on the screen, um, but uh, that would be useful for that if you did that sort of thing. Um, Him resources, and then some other resources that you can buy from Lagos, um, which I am... Right now, I am content with uh, with the collection that I have. Um, it's working good for me, and I'm, I'm very happy with it. Um, so anyway, getting to the um, using the low the low night and, and the the exegetical tools and the and the references have um, have really helped me get. Uh, a little bit closer, I think, to uh, the original meaning and use of the words, and um, the um, the theological dictionary in the New Testament has been helpful because it includes um, the uses of words outside of Scripture. Um, I'd like to. Just pick one here and um, how it's used in the New Testament um, as well as how it's used in um, outside of, of the Bible, how it's used classically. Um, so uh, lots of good references uh, <clears throat> in that um in that one to get at the meaning of the word and that's that uh, like i said that has changed getting at the meaning and the potential for broader meaning of of a particular word um or other uses in scripture or during the first century has has allowed us to get uh, a better handle on on the meaning of the text um, rather than just not that we shouldn't trust the translators, we should, but uh, just sometimes there's a richer, fuller um, meaning there um, that uh, that you don't you just don't get um, without digging a little bit. So that's been uh, that's been very helpful. So again. Um, uh, the the Hebrew and uh, the Greek and Hebrew tools, um, these reference works again have been very helpful. I I am um, just getting started with the uh, with the Hebrew tools, um, but um, I'm getting there, I, and I the, I know the tools exist, so um, that's. Uh, That's available to me as the need as the need arises. So, um, so that's <clears throat> sorry. That's my uh, Greek and Hebrew tools, uh, commentaries, uh, the reference, um, the reference works, um, and again uh, taking uh, from the commentaries. Uh, some of the more classical teaching um, of uh, of these older works uh, has been great um, because they're not trying to sell me books. Uh, honestly, authors that are dead aren't trying to sell you books anymore. Uh, so I feel like um, that's just kind of tongue in cheek, but they're 
uh, they are more helpful getting at the meaning uh, rather than trying to sell a philosophy of ministry or anything like that. It's um, uh, Lang and Com and uh, Lang and Calvin. Uh, their works have uh, have been terrific that way. Uh, so the library here um, is much more extensive uh, than uh, than I take advantage of, um, but it's it's all there. Should I uh, should I need it? Um, and I'm kind of a I like taking freebies. So um, Logos has offered a lot of free books, um, and I. I've taken some like these here, they're all free, but they're not written, written in English. So that was kind of a wasted effort, but um, this, uh, so there's 2,202 uh, resources in my library right now, which is more books than my office could hold, honestly. Um, so, uh, there's there's certainly uh, depths to be plumbed here um, in all of these different uh, different re resources um, but so for instance these are all all of these books are are in my one tab of the um, JP Lang's uh, commentary on the Holy Scriptures. So rather than one big thick book for each book of the Bible, I have one tab. Uh, so again, so there's a lot of here. And this isn't all, uh, this isn't all Bible study um, stuff. There's some, there's some history, some hi history works. Here's Confederate military history. So history of the South. Um, Confession of St. Augustine, so we've got some classics in here as well. Um, there are some newer books, uh, Crazy Love, Francis Chan. Again, he's still selling books, so I'm not, uh, I'm not that interested in that right now. Um, so as you can see, the library is just absolutely huge. And I know I don't have the, the lowest version of the Logos library, but this is more books than I can read in my lifetime. So, um, but anyway, we're only in the M's. Try not to go too fast here, but as you can see, 2,200 books is a lot. But I can, I can search these by name. I can search, um, uh, by topic. Um, by scripture, scripture reference, um, which is great. So it's just, I mean, I have so much information at my fingertips. Um, even having used this, having used this software for the last uh, 12 years, 12 or 13, maybe even 14 years, I barely scratched the surface. Um, but even that scratch has made an absolutely uh, huge um, change in my preparation and preaching. Um, so rather than uh, be content with um, just, you know, that uh, those few pages in, in the back of my um, Greek and Hebrew, Greek and Hebrew keyword study Bible, um, like I started with, uh, I now have this huge library at my fingertips. Um, and I, so I'm certainly not wanting for, uh, for, um, for information. Um, and the good thing about logos is they're, they will, uh, constantly remind you that there are more resources out there than what you have. Um, so the homepage here, there's always, um, there's always more resources available um, and deals and stuff like that. So, um, as well as, hey, Hebrew Alphabet Tutor. So maybe that's a, a, 
another tool I can take advantage of as I uh, continue to learn and grow uh, my understanding of Hebrew. Uh, so, all sorts of resources and opportunities there. Again, like I said, I've scratched the surface just barely of, of what all is available here. Um, so lots of blogs and stuff like that. I also have uh, the Logos app on my phone, which is connected to my account here. Um, so I can have access to all of my library and all of those resources right on my phone, as well as um, uh, a lot of different um, a lot of different versions of the Bible. Um, so that's uh, that's really good, and, and I use that quite a bit. Um, I, I don't look like a pastor walking around because I don't carry a paper Bible with me everywhere, but I have my phone, which has like 50 different versions of the Bible in it, um, all because of this program. So um, that's really helpful. There are some other tools up here. Um, uh, interesting words, uh, biblical things, biblical places, biblical people um, that I can, um, you know, I can... Uh, so if I click on biblical people, the last thing that I looked up was legion, talking about a Roman legion, um, and getting information about that. Um, uh, then there's uh, biblical places. Uh, still looking for legion here. But if I type in, let's say, Philippi. So I have a lot of choices here the city the church um the jailer at philippi rulers of philippi the town accessory of philippi um so if there's you know if i want to get information on philippi the city i can just click on that um so i get some maps to show me where it is um and the key biblical events that happened there um so these, these are the different uh, um, uh, the dictionaries that have uh, definitions and information about Philippi. Uh, again, the library results, that's out of, out of this list of 2,200 books. Um, all kinds of articles about, uh, about Philippi. Um, Okay, so other other places it's tagged and other resources. Some some other resources you can look into, places nearby, things like that. Um, so you can look it up on Wikipedia. You can find it on the on the Google Map. Um, so that's a, that's been a great tool um, in setting the context, understanding. You know, when we talk about Paul's missionary journeys and what, you know, what that looked like and how much area he was covering, um, we can show that on a map. And uh, a lot of a lot of times, especially new believers or even people that have followed the Lord for a long time, just haven't done a lot of research um, into the context of the Old and New Testament, have no idea how much ground was actually covered, how much um, um uh, mileage uh, Paul put on in his missionary journeys or or uh, understanding where where Israel is exactly in relation to Egypt and Syria and, the, and these other places in Mesopotamia and then you know understanding what all else was going on in the rest of the world at that time uh, at the time of uh, you know the golden age of Israel um, that uh, that can be really helpful uh, to help people understand that with maps and stuff. So uh, I think that that is about, uh, that's about all that I wanted to cover to kind of walk you through um, what all I uh, do with this, with this awesome program. Um, so I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I do have some more, uh, now that it's not selecting everything over here, I have some more um, resources in that, on this tab.
over here some more information. So if I click on the word runners, I can get the, uh, um, the English definition uh, as well as Lonata and uh, the Theological Dictionary of the New Testament. Uh, what other translations, um, what words they, uh, they use, so ESV, NIV, they all use runners. Um, King James and the authorized version say which run, which I imagine is those which run or they which run. Uh, the Latin Vulgate, um, the New Living Translation, uh, New King James, New American Standard Bible. So anyway, uh, that's, that's kind of fun because uh, we do have some people that are used to different translations in our church family. So being able to kind of address that a little bit, especially when people come to me with uh, questions of what their King James say says, um, that uh, creates a lot of difficulty in understanding. Uh, but being able to kind of compare and contrast those to better explain um, what's what the meaning is there. So again, this is where it can uh, you can get it to pronounce the Greek word for you, just so you can show off. Um, so again, uh, some other themes and and uh, and other footnotes, cross references and stuff. Um, so those are those have been good. Um, here in the text itself, there's there's also um, cross references. Um, you just hover over each one of those. Uh, so any letters is a cross reference, and a number will be a footnote. So here, number two. The Greek says, I pummel my body and make it my slave rather than discipline my body and keep it under control. So just a, the older translation, or older manuscript said it's that way. Um, okay. So that's about it. So that's kind of my uh, walking tour of uh, Logos Bible Study software. Um, I honestly, if it wasn't for uh, the Interpreting 2 class, I, I probably wouldn't have this resource. And I don't, I don't know where I would be <clears throat> in, my, in my own study of the word. Um, these shelves would probably have uh, books on them instead of Coke bottles. Um, but um, I hope this has been sufficient uh, to, uh, to prove competency in, um, in the different areas required. Um, my understanding of Hebrew and Greek linguistics, uh, the tools that are available in Logos, the library, um, and integrating uh, um, integrating the original author's intent um, in into the regular use of uh, preaching, teach, preaching, teaching, and worship, um, and that understanding. This is uh, Logos has made a huge, huge difference uh, in doing that work. Um, so. Again, I hope that uh, this video has been uh, entertaining and informative. Um, thanks for watching.